Hello, Frontline Teach. Uh, this is Val, and previously on Frontline, we started to explore the concept of HIV resistance. And where we left was that for um, all of the meds that we currently have, uh, we want to keep the level of medication at a steady level in the body so that we can avoid resistance. So that's where we're going to start today, understanding steady state. Uh, the amount of drug needed in the blood to be effective is different for every drug. Um, so there's not a point at which we could say, oh, you need to have 25 milligrams of drug or 250 milligrams of drug or whatever. It's different for each drug. Um, and the amount of drug that you need to take to get the right level in the blood is also slightly different for each person. Um, and uh, all drug dosing is a best guess based on what happened in the clinical trials. Um, so uh, when I talked in the last section about poor absorption of the med in the bloodstream, sometimes there are ways to do some more uh, thorough testing to if if somebody is experiencing HIV resistance and they never miss a dose of the meds, you want to figure out what else is going on. And sometimes we can do what's called therapeutic drug monitoring to see how much um, for an individual, when they take the regular dose, how much of the medication gets throughout their system. Um, and they might, the dosage might then change after that testing is done. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, but what I want to show you is what we call the graph of steady state. And remember, each medication has its own graph. So we have in this graph, this is the axis known as time, and then this is the level of medication in the bloodstream. Um, and so each med has a different zone that is just right, the most effective dosing. Um, and each med has a different line below which it's too low and there's not enough medication in the bloodstream to get everywhere it needs to go and do everything it needs to do. Each med also has a line over which it's too high and you have more side effects than you need without any extra benefit. So what we want to do is keep the level of drug on every drug that you have, every medication that you take, the idea of it is to always keep it in this zone. So I'm going to show you an illustration of how that happens, how it's supposed to work here. Time, medication in the blood, and then here is our, these are our um, sort of lines for that, this particular medication. And so let's say this is a, a pill that you take once a day and you take it at 7 a.m. because that's what works for you generally. Okay, every medication has a bell curve that's like this where you swallow the pill it starts to get distributed in the bloodstream it gets up into the just right zone and then your body starts to excrete it out like whether it's whether you piss it out or sweat it out or whatever it starts to leave um, and so the next dose that you take at 7 a.m. is structured this this is a 24-hour pill, and so it's structured to be coming in right as the other one is leaving, right? And so there's a crossover here that it always stays in the just right zone, right? Next day, the same thing. It's the new dose is coming in when the old dose is leaving. And that's the idea, is that you always want this crossover to happen in what some might call the Goldilocks zone. Um, but so let's say that somebody misses a dose, right? It's not the end of the world. It happens. But so at 7 a.m. one day, they take it. And the next 7 a.m., they just don't. They don't remember until the next morning, and they take it then, right? So what we have here is a window in the too low zone. There's not enough meds in the blood in this area. And it's a pretty small window. Um, of course, you know, this graph isn't, isn't, um, exactly, uh, do, you know, uh, isn't a perfect representation of how big this window actually would be. It's different for every medication. Um, but this window is a time in which, um, HIV can reproduce. And if HIV reproduces in here, you remember, 
it messes with its own genetic code, it's trying to make those photocopies of itself, it might make viruses that have small changes that can live. And so the next time you take a dose, right, the medication is here, but if it got to make babies here that have small changes that allow them to live while this medication is here, this medication stops doing good. Again, remember, we're not talking about a single mixed dose. We're talking about a window here and then a window here and a window here, you know, regular attempts by HIV to reproduce. Um, and something that a lot of people think that they should do, um, and this works for some meds, but it does not work for HIV meds, is double up after a missed dose. So 7 a.m., right, that um, somebody takes dose as scheduled. The next 7 a.m. they forget, but they remember at 1 p.m., let's say, and they take two um, just to just to cover their bases. Um, what happens there is that actually it shoots right up into the too high zone where you get extra side effects, but no extra benefit for it. Um, so in the case of a missed dose, um, what someone should do is just take the next dose as soon as they remember, try to keep this window as small as possible um, and get back on a schedule that works for them. Um, so don't panic. Um, you know, what counts here is the pattern over time, not a single missed dose. Um, and all pills today, um, and this is based on consumer feedback. This is based on people demanding easier dosing schedules. All pills are moving towards fewer doses per day, um, and that's good, but that means that every single pill has a higher burden. It carries more time being effective than previous ones did. And so they come with wiggle room, but fewer pills means each pill has more responsibility to maintain that steady state concentration. So here's a good question. Is resistance inevitable? Is it always going to happen? Well, no, there's no evidence that resistance will always happen. But we know that all antiviral drugs cause resistance when they're taken by themselves. And the biggest risk factor for resistance to a particular drug is being on that drug. So given the alternative, it's a risk we choose a lot of the times, but it's, um, that is the highest risk for gaining resistance to any med is being on it. Um, so in the next section, um, we're going to talk about strategies for dealing with resistance, but I'm going to end this right here because it's a pretty clean break. So I'll talk to you later.